Hi, everybody. Uh, we'll continue chapter four. Uh, this is section 4.3, which is an important section in, in uh, calculus about how derivatives affect the shape of the graph. So in, in summary, we can talk about uh, the first derivative being positive. Uh, the curve or the function is increasing, rising or increasing. Uh, if uh, the first derivative is negative, then the curve is decreasing. Uh, if uh, the first derivative is zero, uh, there is a possible local maximum or minimum. So this is just a summary and uh, we'll do more examples and we'll reinforce these ideas. Uh, for the second derivative, if it's positive, then you have a, a concave up curve. And um, if it's negative, then you have a, a concave down uh, and you see, you'll see a, a concave up or upward. And of course you see here downward. And when it's zero, uh, there isn't much information there. Uh, it's possible there is inflection point and, um, you know, uh, we'll talk about this case uh, later. Uh, then also we'll talk about the, uh, the inflection point. Inflection point is where conca uh, concavity changes. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the first one. How, what does F prime say about the curve of F? Well, uh, if uh, you have a curve here uh, of a function, as you see between A and B, uh, it is increasing um, between B and C, uh, the function is decreasing. Then between C and D, uh, the function is increasing. Uh, so uh, between A and B, between C and D, these intervals, uh, you have the tangent lines have positive slope. So here you have a, a positive uh, slope, right? And of course, here uh, you're going to have a negative slope. So, in summary, uh, if f prime, if f prime is uh, positive, and on interval, then f is increasing, as uh, mentioned in the introduction. If f prime uh, is less than zero, then the function is decreasing. So, so let's look at this function here, f of x. Uh, if we want to uh, find where it is increasing and decreasing, then we need to find the first derivative. Uh, when we find the first derivative, we'll go back to like algebra or precalculus, uh, where we need to find uh, where this uh, function, which is the first derivative function, is. Uh, positive or negative, which means uh, you, you see here, you're going to factor. So there are some questions uh, of review uh, in, in this 4.3, just to factor. So um, just in time review or what to review or, uh, or to review uh, factoring. Uh, when you factor this, you get 12x uh, and x minus 2 and x plus 1. So when you use the zero product property, it, it gives you uh, these three critical points or values. And uh, you put them on a number line. And now you're going to test what happens uh, on each side of uh, of these, uh, which means the left and right of each of these numbers. How do you test that? You're going to take a number from wherever I put the check marks and you're going to try them in 12x times x minus, uh, times x plus one and uh, x minus two. So you're going to test the check marks in using values from these intervals, right? 
And uh, once you do that, you'll find out whether the answer is positive or negative. So be, for example, between zero and two, you can take one and you, you try one here and you'll find out, um, you see here, uh, this is positive. This one is negative. So this whole thing is gonna be negative between zero and two. Right there. So uh, so you can follow this method here in, in the slide or you can uh, just check uh, using these numbers, right? Uh, for example, here you can try three, here you can uh, try uh, negative 0 0.5, all uh, right, here you can try negative two, um, whichever you want, uh, you use it in the whole function. And here uh, you see the pieces of the function or the factors, and then they multiply them. And here are the results. So it looks like uh, in these intervals, X is less than negative one means this side here, X is less than negative one. And you have X between these two and between these two and X greater than two. So that's how this table is set up. And uh, of course this can be reviewed from algebra or pre-calculus. And that gives uh, now a good idea on what's happening. Uh, if F prime is negative, then it is decreasing on this interval. If it's positive, then it is increasing on that interval and so forth. And of course, if we graph the function, we'll see the, the same thing we were talking about. So what is the local extreme values, which is uh, what we talked about in, in the past uh, presentation uh, for point one. Uh, so uh, the first derivative test is supposed to suppose that C is a critical number for a continuous. So here, as you see, previously we talked about it in a way and now you'll talk about it in another way. If F of prime changes positive to negative at C, then F has a local maximum. So I will explain this in, 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 the, in, in the chart because they're better that way. Here, here they are. So if, if uh, the first derivative uh, changes, you see this point C, and if it is uh, positive and becomes negative after you see this point C there, then you have a local maximum, which means you have an increase then a decrease. Uh, that's the way I described it uh, previously. If you have a, a decrease, then an increase after that point C, right? Which means a negative first derivative followed by a positive first derivative, then you have a local minimum. So what happens if they did not change sign, which means positive to positive? You see here uh, a positive to positive, that means there is no maximum or minimum. Same thing if it's negative to negative. Uh, so you need to, for the first derivative to switch sign in order to have a local maximum or a minimum. Now let's talk about the second derivative. Uh, if you look at these fi figures 5a and 5b, they're both decreasing, uh, increasing. Uh, the function f and g, they're increasing, but they're not increasing the same way, right? And um, if you put the slopes on them, you can see how uh, the slopes are changing. And uh, one is increasing uh, much uh, higher than the other. And uh, you can see that uh, this one is concave upward or concave up. And this one is concave downward, right? So uh, for the parabolas, we say to open up and open down. Uh, here, uh, it's not a problem. But the curve uh, kind of takes this light turn and uh, looks up, uh, so it concave upward, and here it concaves uh, downward, and uh, you can see the tangents drawn. 
And here, of course, just uh, you can pause and, and go through this one to see uh, the different examples. And we can uh, talk about them in examples. So now we need to figure out what, how does the second prime determines this concavity? Well, uh, we can go uh, directly to this. If the second derivative is positive, which we had uh, in the introduction, um, the graph concaves upward on the interval. If it is negative, then it concaves downward uh, on that interval, right? And uh, I, I put some a summary here uh, for, for the two, uh, which will be helpful, these four charts, which you can connect two different things. So for example, the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is positive. So you have this case, it is increasing However, uh, while the rate of change uh, of f of x increasing. So if it is concaving up, it is uh, increasing, uh, um, the, the function is increasing, but the rate of change itself is also increasing. Uh, compare that with this, when it concaves down. Uh, the function is still increasing, but the rate of change um, is decreasing, right? So that's uh, the difference between these two, right? Uh, so now uh, the, I left it here until I get to this and, you, and now you have uh, these descriptions. So if the first derivative is negative, then it is decreasing. If the second derivative is positive, Positive means it concave up, right? So it is decreasing and the rate of change is increasing, right? And now the last one um, here, well, these two, uh, the first derivative is negative. That means it is decreasing. So you see it's, uh, it's still a decrease. Uh, however, it is not decreasing in the same way as, as this one. So uh, the rate of change is also decreasing. So th these uh, are the information that they provide us, which they are uh, important for applications. So if we look at this example for a population of a graph and, and uh, how uh, the number of bees in thousands and time in weeks. So as you see the curve kind of increasing and it keeps increasing. Uh, there is no decrease here. However, here it, it concaves up and here it concaves down, right? So that tells us about the rate uh, of increase, right? So, uh, so if we look at this point 12 right there, uh, it is uh, where the uh, kind of, this is what will be the inflection point because you have a concave up and a, and a concave down or downward. And that point where the two switch from the upward to the downward is gonna be the inflection point. So this is the inflection point here, 12. So uh, again, uh, now to describe a, 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 the inflection point, then uh, by definition, if it is continuous there, of course, and they're changing from uh, upward to downward or, or vice versa. Uh, the second derivative test, if you have F prime equals zero and the second derivative is positive, then there is a local minimum. Why? Uh, of course, if, if this, as you see, the second derivative is uh, positive. So for example, it's concaving up, right? 
but it's saying that at that point, if the tangent is zero, then yes, you do have a local uh, minimum at C. So if it's concaving, uh, if the second derivative is less than zero means concaves down. And at some point, then uh, the tangent, which is uh, this here, zero, then it uh, then uh, there is a local maximum. So that's how now these ideas are connected. And uh, we can discuss uh, this curve. Um, so similarly, uh, we, we can uh, now uh, use the ideas. So if you have this curve, you take the first derivative, the second derivative. Of course, uh, for to find where this is uh, positive or negative, that means we'll, we'll go back to pre-calculus, same thing for these uh, here. And uh, which means uh, you get the function, uh, again, you factor. Uh, so you can set it to zero and this will give you the two points and this will give you the, these other two points. Uh, so f of prime of zero um, is zero, and when you used for three, the so let's look at we're looking first at the first derivative. Uh, then uh, when we look at the second derivative, uh, f of uh, double prime for zero is zero, and this one is positive. So the one we can work with now is three, right? So you have zero and three but it looks like three is the one we can work with. Why? Because uh, it gives us uh, the values that are not zero, zero. Uh, so F prime of three is, is zero and F double prime of three uh, is positive, right? So as mentioned there, so there is a local minimum there and you want to find what the local minimum, you will substitute three into the function. Uh, however, for the zero, there is a problem with it because uh, the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is zero. So we need uh, more information. So maybe we'll go back to the first derivative and uh, we can set up, uh, just like the previous example, we can set up uh, the table for the second derivative or the number line, right? You can do the same thing. Um, zero and two and put the second derivative here, right? And, uh, and try, uh, just like mentioned, check, check, check. Uh, we can check each part of these and uh, we'll find positive, negative, positive. Uh, second derivative positive means upward then uh, downward and upward. And you see the switch upward to downward means zero is uh, inflection point. Uh, downward switches to upward again means that two is also another inflection point. So these are some of the ideas uh, we collect in order to get a good idea about uh, the graph. And uh, if it's graphed, you get this way here. Uh, and we'll do more uh, examples to clarify this. So the second derivative test is inconclusive when, uh, so this is uh, important, we'll see it because uh, you need more information in that case, right? And we'll talk about it. Um, so if it's positive or negative, it gives you clear cut information. So if we look at the lecture activity, first example, 
or as well uh, the homework. Uh, there is similar example on it. And um, so watch for this. Don't assume always it's the function. So this is the graph of the derivative f prime uh, of a function f is shown. So this is the graph of the derivative itself, not uh, the function. So and what interval uh, is f increasing? So 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 watch for this. So this is f, but this is f prime. So f increasing when f prime is positive. So you want to come to this graph and look to where f prime is positive, which means the y value, of course, uh, of f prime, right? So it is increasing between four and eight because it is positive between four and eight. And what interval f, see, is decreasing? Well, it is decreasing where f prime uh, is negative. Well, f prime here is negative, or the y value is is negative or below the x-axis, right? Um, in these two intervals, negative infinity to four and uh, a to infinity. All right, so you use the the domain values. Uh, at what values of x does f has a local maximum or a, or a minimum? So again, uh, we're talking about f having local maximum or a minimum. So remember, for f to have a local maximum or a minimum, f prime uh, must switch, right? Switch uh, from positive to negative or negative to positive, which means there is an increase to a decrease for the function. Uh, so here F prime is positive here, but negative here, the switch happens at four. So negative to positive happens at four. So that's one uh, local maximum for the function. And uh, here, a positive to negative happens at eight, all right? So you see now this uh, small exercise helps us better understand the function and the first derivative and connect the two and uh, don't assume any time you see a graph that's the function f, right? Um, the derivatives themselves are functions, like uh, in this example. So uh, let's look at this one and uh, put some numbers here. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, um, so but here again, uh, this is not f prime, this is a function f itself over zero seven interval. The open interval on, uh, on which f is increasing, well, it looks like um, this is just a direct thing. So between uh, zero and one, uh, it's increasing, then it drops, then uh, from three, it keeps increasing. It does not, uh, and you see it says zero to seven, not uh, infinity. So that's why it's seven there. Uh, the open interval on which F is decreasing, uh, there is one decrease, so, which is this one here, uh, one, three. The open interval on which F is concave uh, upward, uh, the concave upward uh, means uh, it's coming down and it's going up. So it's coming down here. And um, uh, so two to four. And then it does a downward. Then it, it does another upward. 
All right, so uh, the next one, concave down. Concave down is, uh, you can see here, it's this zero to two. Because here, uh, the two is where it switches there uh, to do the airport, so zero to two. And it comes here and uh, I mentioned this one. So, um, uh, let's now clean it so it's easy to see. So you have, um, so let's change it here. This is the concave down. All right, so four to five. Then the coordinates for the points of inflection, uh, we know uh, now we saw the two is an inflection point, and we saw the four is an inflection point, and we saw the five is an inflection point, right? So the five is switches there, a four is switches there, and a, and a two is coming down to switch there. And uh, from the graph, uh, a two goes with the a two, a four is close to 2.8, 2.9, 2.8 there, a five, a four, right? So suppose you are given a formula for a function, how do you determine if F is increasing or decreasing? So this is kind of just what we talked about, F prime of X um, is greater than zero, this is uh, increasing and decreasing f prime of x is uh, less than zero. How do you determine where the graph is concave upward? Uh, again, uh, and downward. How do you locate inflection point? Uh, so um, it's where Uh, points where uh, where the concavity changes, right? Um, and uh, we talked about it. So uh, for this example, it, it's a little bit different, strange, because you're given the graph and it's asked to sketch, um, but um, I put it in a way to talk about it because uh, a nice thing to review is these two here. Uh, we need to uh, recognize that as x goes to negative infinity equal to negative two, that's a, a horizontal asymptote. And uh, as x goes to infinity, f of x approaches zero, that's also a horizontal asymptote, right? So that's uh, one nice thing to review uh, in this example. And of course, the other stuff is already sketched there. And, um, and uh, the uh, other information needed uh, upward, uh, upward. So negative infinity to negative six and six to infinity, uh, we have uh, concave up. Uh, and um, down, or so near to six to six, right? Um, uh, inflection points. Uh, near the six and six are inflection points, right? Suppose that uh, the second derivative is continuous. 
on this domain and or interval. If f prime of negative one equals zero and f double prime of negative one equal uh, three, uh, what uh, can we say? Uh, of course, um, it has a local minimum. Of course, because this concave down, uh, concave up, because it's positive, and means here it's a it's a flat, it's a, it's a zero, so that's a, a local minimum for sure, and this is the case now to reinforce that uh, we need uh, more information uh, here because uh, the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is zero. When the second derivative is zero, that's in conclusive case, right? Uh, here you're given different criteria. So to summarize, and you have a, a different uh, uh, multiple choice graphs. And of course you just use what we talked about to pick the correct graph. And in this case, this is the correct graph. Uh, f prime if uh, for zero and two and four are zero. So they are either local minimum or maximum. Uh, f prime is positive even when X is less than zero means um, it is increasing, the graph is increasing. So you, you can follow um, and use the elimination process Uh, to decide uh, the correct graph, right? And now you know uh, everything about the first derivative and the second one. Uh, so let's talk about number nine. And of course, it is in a factored form. And what uh, intervals uh, f is increasing, we'll do the same thing. Since it is uh, already in um, factored form, that means if you want to do f prime of x equals zero, you're going to set them to zero as the zero product property. And that gives you negative two, and that gives you a three, and that gives you five. So there is a trick that's gonna make this much easier. Uh, and just like uh, I explained, uh, you're gonna need to check each part for this f prime formula, which means you're going to need whatever number to test, you're going to try it in x plus 2, in x minus 3, in x minus 5. Then you will multiply these three to get the f prime of x. So maybe we'll do it the other way. Um, And uh, you'll multiply these three and you get the result. Uh, so if you notice here, this is uh, even and this is even. So whatever you substitute uh, won't matter for the sign because these are even. Uh, so even if you put like a four minus five, you get negative one to the sixth power, which, which is even would be positive. So since these are even, uh, this is gonna be always positive. So what matters really is this one. Uh, of course, if you don't want to take this shortcut, you can substitute for all of them here and here and here, multiply uh, each number from here, let's say negative three, um, you say zero, let's say four, let's say six, try each one of them. But uh, if you want to do the shortcut, these two, this x minus three here, uh, of course, if you try zero, uh, it's gonna be negative three to the fifth. It's still gonna be a negative number and this is gonna be a positive number and this is gonna be a positive number and this is gonna be a, uh, a negative number. All right, so 
um, pause the, the video and try a six, uh, six minus three, three to the fifth is gonna be uh, positive, you know, and you can try a six in each one of them and multiply them. Uh, it won't matter, you will get uh, negative, negative, positive, positive. So where does, um, where does uh, now the question F increasing? Uh, we need a positive for increasing. We need the first derivatives to be positive. So the answer is three infinity. All right, so a last example, uh, which we'll do similarly, just to make sure that everybody needs to uh, keep attention to uh, what, what graph do we have? You see, we no longer have only the function f as always. Now we have f prime, we have f double prime. So if this is the second derivative, right? Uh, then state the coordinates of the inflection points of F. Well, so where does the inflection point ha uh, happen? Uh, inflection point happens when you have uh, concave up. So uh, as a, a summary, you have concave upward to downward or downwards to upward. Uh, upward means the second derivative is positive and this is second derivative is negative. Or this one, the second derivative is negative to the second derivative is positive. Uh, what does it mean here for the graph? This is the y value, which means where it is positive. It's positive here and it remains positive here. It is negative here. So this point two and this point seven is where these switches happen from negative to positive, which was the graph is gonna concave down, then it will concave up. And when it gets to this number seven, from positive to negative, right? Which means it will concave up to down. So the two inflection points are to, uh, maybe I should do an N7. All right, thank you.